Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Angus. Uh, I'm from Chronicle. Um, as uh, Johnny just uh, introduced there, we're the Oracle of MakerDAO. Um, and yeah, I'm here to talk to you about a problem today. Um, and that problem is getting data into uh, smart contracts or onto the blockchain and how that is causing uh, a bit of an issue, right? So getting data into smart contracts uh, securely and reliably, that's uh, what we want to achieve. Right now, we're reliant on oracles to do that. Uh, essentially, if you're not familiar with oracles, they're this uh, sort of blockchain infrastructure. They identify the truth of data and then bridge it onto the blockchain. They also bridge between blockchains as well. Because essentially, if, you're, if you've built a dApp or a product on a blockchain such as Ethereum or Polygon, Avalanche, whatever, um, you're limited to the data that's available within that blockchain ecosystem. If you want data from outside of that blockchain uh, or off-chain, you need an Oracle to bridge it in. The problem is that Oracles are expensive to operate due to the amount of gas that they consume. Um, and no Oracle has yet to alleviate these problems uh, until now. So before I get into the how, uh, I'll start with a very short background. Um, you may have never heard of Chronicle, and there's a good reason for that. We just launched the brand a few weeks ago um, at Permissionless in uh, Texas. Um, however, the origin story of Chronicle actually dates back to MakerDAO. Um, our founder, Nicholas Kunkel, uh, was part of the founding team of Maker, uh, building DAI uh, back then. And this is where uh, Nick, uh, Nicholas, our founder, and uh, a guy called Mariano Conti, uh, built the very first Oracle in 2017, uh, essentially Chronicle V1. Um, and these Oracles have secured Maker for over six years, um, which makes uh, Chronicle actually one of the oldest protocols in all of crypto, not just Oracles, but uh, one of the oldest protocols uh, still running today. So today, Chronicle Oracles secure in the region of six billion uh, US dollars, which makes us the second largest Oracle by TVS or total value secured. And then before we sort of get into, you know, what makes Chronicle Oracles different, you know, what we've done and what we've launched uh, quite recently, um, I think we, but first it, it, it would be prudent to sort of understand what the current landscape looks like. So here is what an Oracle looks like today. It's essentially a black box. It kicks out a number in this case, some nice looking numbers, actually. I'm not sure if we're quite up at 28861 on BTC right now, but it looks good. And you're just, you just sort of have to trust that. You just have to believe that. You just go with that, okay? Um, if you're, uh, say, a product or a, or a user of, of that Oracle. Um, it's, it's really strange because the ecosystem spent billions building out these decentralized blockchains and protocols, yet Oracles, for some reason, have had this free pass and they're often points of centralization and uh, non-transparency. Furthermore, oracles today don't scale, okay? So the gas costs are too high for oracles to push updates regularly. So when I say oracles don't scale, essentially what that means is that an oracle can only update its data, say it's, a, it's reporting on a price, it can only update the price of Bitcoin every, say, hour or every two hours, depending on that cost. Because every time it updates that cost and pushes it on chain, it's having to pay gas to do that. So the Oracle provider is sort of shouldering that cost, which obviously gets pushed back to the end user at the end of the day. And that makes it, as a business model, very difficult to have these updates going, uh, say, every minute or every 30 seconds, or depending on the accuracy of that data and the availability. So. Um, that's a problem, you know, if, if you're running an app that needs to like know the price of something more regularly than that, you know, that's, that's an issue. Um, there's no Oracle scalability in that sense. The gas costs are too high. So on, on, a layer, on layer one, for example, such as Ethereum, the cost of an, an Oracle can quickly balloon to $500,000 a year. Um, and that's, you know, that's uh, sort of crazy numbers when we're talking about actually building the future of finance, for example. Um, some Oracle providers that you guys may be familiar with already have tried to solve this. Um, they do this in ways where they effectively 
um, uh, user trade-off, right? So they'll reduce the number of updates that that Oracle does, as we just covered, that will reduce the, the amount of gas you're paying because you're not updating it as often. Or they'll reduce the amount of validators, right? So I'll get into how validators operate or feeds operate. They're essentially the people that are attesting to the, the truth of that data. The more validators you have, the more secure and the more decentralized uh, your Oracle is. But by reducing that, you're also making it less secure, right? So if there's, say, four validators or four feeds, and um, they are all attesting to the, the figure of, I don't know, whatever it was, 28,500. If two of them collude and say, oh, actually, we want to, we're going to report that the value is $5,000, right? Then instantly you've got a problem, right? Because then you've got a problem with quorum and consensus. 50% uh, of your validators are effectively manipulating the system. So the more you have, the safer your system is. It's a bit like how Ethereum operates. Um, now, the, and, and, and the sort of the final way that, that people are trying to get around this is they use marketing spin to create this term called a pull oracle, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, and essentially all that does is just passes the buck onto the end user, right? So the end user is the one doing the Oracle update and they have to pay for that in their transaction when they're using the app. We think we can do better than that. And at Chronicle, that's what we've been working on. We've developed something called Chronicle uh, or called Scribe, right? And this is actually an engineering remedy for these issues, not just sort of marketing spin, not some new trade-off. This is a genuine engineering breakthrough. Now, Scribe is defined by three things, decentralized, verifiable, scalable, or cost efficiency. They're one and the same. And if there's three things I want you to take away from this today about Chronicle, it's these. First, decentralized. So I said I'd explain how the feeds or, or validators work. Uh, essentially, within the, the, the Chronicle protocol, um, we have right now 22 feeds. Um, I think our nearest competitor has 11. Um, and they are running a node, okay? So they're like a validator, they're running a node, and that node is constantly sourcing the, uh, if we're talking about price as a data, so the price of uh, a cryptocurrency, they're constantly sourcing the price of these cryptocurrencies that we're looking for, so Bitcoin, Ethereum, in USD, et cetera. And uh, they're constantly updating those in real time off chain, okay? Um, if we want to know the value of one of those things to push it on chain for, for a product like a DeFi protocol, I know DYDX or Maker or something who needs to know the value of this thing, um, we just turn around to them and, and ask them all, like, what's the value? And they report it, right? Um, this is how it's sort of decentralized because, you know, we're not in control of how that value gets on, into the protocol and out to the end user. It's actually, it's the node providers that are constantly sourcing that value and have it there available. And then, um, we actually take that value based on consensus, right? So of, of 22 feeds, we need a, a quorum of 13, right? So as long as 13 of those feeds are reporting prices within a certain parameter, percentage parameter, we will take that value as true. We'll take the sort of the median average of that value and then feed it through, okay? You may be thinking, why has he got all of these like really well-known uh, blockchain brands, OGs, you know, whatever you want to call them. And the reason is these are the people who are actually running our nodes. These are, the, these are our partners. These are the people who are, who are effectively our validators, or some of them. Um, and the reason that we work with people like this to, to do this is because we believe that the trust in the values that the Oracle reports grows stronger when you've got sort of brands like this attesting to those, to that data, right? Attesting to the truth or the accuracy of that data. Um, and also, if we're talking about hacking an Oracle, or we're talking about attacking an Oracle, um, as we talked about, you need a, over 50% of the validators sort of manipulated to do that. If someone's able to like, you know, uh, manipulate or, or take down the security of all of these guys, then I think we've got bigger problems than just, uh, you know, what's going on at Chronicle and our Oracle being hacked. So this is what it looks like, for example, in real time in our dashboard, as I said, the these are the, 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 the brands running the, running the nodes. There you can see some of the pairs that they're reporting on and the last time they updated. And then the next point that I wanted to talk about was verifiability. So I just talked about trust and there's something better than trust. And for us, that's verifiability, right? If you can verify something, then you don't need to trust. It eradicates the need for trust, okay? Because you can check it yourself. Um, so what does this, mean, does this mean when we say Chronicle is verifiable? 
So verifiable to us means transparent and legible, okay? So what good is transparency if only senior devs, you know, very technical people know how to decipher it, right? They know how to go on to, you know, into Foundry or Etherscan and look at the right contracts and, you know, they're able to find this. So that's why we say it's transpar transparency and legibility. And that's why we built the Chronicle, which effectively is our on-chain dashboard that you can access through the website. Anyone can track any reported value from our Oracle end to end. Right now, the way Oracles work, as we talked about at the start, is black boxes. They just kick out a number, right? And if we want finance in this space to grow and to evolve, we can't, you can't rely on this sort of level of trust. You need something more. You need verifiability. So this here is a snapshot, for example, from our dashboard. This is the ETH USD Oracle. And um, you can see here the, the sort of the, the latest reported price. You can see the chart. And you can click anywhere on that chart historically and see what, our, what value that Oracle reported at any given time. If we scroll down, so this would be scrolling down the page, you can then see, right, so the, the, the price reported at that, 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 you know, September the 6th, 2023 was 161981 uh, uh, for Ethereum and USD. How did we get there, right? If this is a maths exam, we didn't just give the answer. How did we, you know, we showed our working out. How did we get there? And we can see that all of these feeds, some of them are the brands that we talked about, some of them are non-brands, um, but they're all known, sort of known actors. How did they uh, get, how did we sort of arrive at this number? You can see they, they each reported in slightly different values and we landed on the median average of those values once we aggregated them together. And here you'll see the 13 of 22, which effect effectively is the first 13 to report in to give us quorum. And then we can go a layer deeper. And this is a really cool part. Uh, and this is entirely unique uh, to Chronicle. We can actually see how did like, how did Argent, as a reporter of this value. How did they get to 164058 in this case? And we can see here they queried Kraken, Bitstamp, Gemini, Coinbase Pro, the ETHUSD pairs on there. And then that's how they got to that value, okay? So that really it sort of injects that element of trust where you know exactly how that number's been arrived on. You could be using uh, a protocol like Maker, for example, where you've put up a load of collateral, like, I don't know, 50 BTC, like all your life's work and you get liquidated, right? Because the price of BTC drops too low. This will allow you, this will allow anyone to go and check and see how did the Oracle that Maker's using, for example, get to this price that effectively liquidated you and, and, and uh, uh, wrecked you, so to speak. And then if you're really, really technical, um, you can actually go a layer deeper again. And the user, we allow the user to actually run the same verif verification that the smart contract runs uh, locally in their browser. Um, and this is to prove that the attestation is legitimate. Um, as you can see here, the metadata that we had on the dashboard matched up with what was on chain. So the message at the bottom matched the feed address, which is effectively the hash. They match. We actually made this editable. And we did that because we wanted people to be able to show how the hash no longer matches on chain, right? And if it's on chain, it's immutable, you can't change it. If you change, say, the age profile to say it happened a few seconds earlier or a few minutes earlier uh, in, on our dashboard, and then try and click verify, it won't verify because the hash has changed, the signature has changed, and that won't match up with what's on chain anymore. And that's just an element to allow you to sort of like verify the verifier, if you like. Finally, and perhaps the most interesting element of Scribe and the development that Chronicle has made, is the scalable factor or the cost efficiency factor. Um, and the way that we've done this is we, we've used something called optimistic Schnorr signatures. Um, and this is like a signature aggregation scheme. I'm not gonna go like too deep into the technicalities of that, but what that's done is that's unlocked a 66% gas improvement on uh, most generally against oracles and versus certain competitors such as Chainlink, for example, that's 80 plus percent. So that means 80 plus percent more uh, cost effective to run a Chronicle Oracle versus, you know, a Chainlink Oracle, for example. So before we get into how we've done that, um, I want to just talk very quickly about like what were our goals when we started working on this sort of iteration two years ago. Um, we wanted, you know, an Oracle that was a single implement implementation across all EVM chains, right? So very easy to, to update, very easy to, to uh, spread and, and, and get it on more chains. And also secure, right? If it's the same implementation across all chains, it's easy to manage, it's easy to secure. 
Um, we wanted to de decouple the Oracle update gas cost from the number of feed validators. As we already talked about, the more validators you have, the more feeds that you have, the more secure and decentralized your Oracle is. But there's this trade-off where like, the more you have, the more it costs to run your Oracle because every one of those validators has to sign on chain, right? So every signature costs gas. So by decoupling that, you can have as many as you want and it won't sort of ratchet up with um, the cost, uh, the, ga the, cast, the cost, goodness, the cost of gas won't ratchet up um, in relation to how many validators you have. And finally, we wanted to minimize that overall Oracle update cost as well. So there were some obstacles to this. Um, as some of you may know, you know, layer twos and layer ones have dramatically different properties when it comes to transaction costs. Layer ones have really expensive computes, but cheap call data. Layer twos are the opposite, expensive call data, but cheap compute. Now, how do we create a solution that works for both, right? As we said, a single implementation um, in effectively opposite environments. Also, there's this sort of misconception that Solidity code, you know, Ethereum code basically, is like copy pasta, right, across all EVM chains. Um, that's not true. EVMs have vastly different precompiles and implementations. So that actually makes it extremely difficult to come up with a universal solution um, that works across all EVM chains and Ethereum as well. This is what we came up with. Now, you'll see this is actually uh, from Masari. Um, if you're really interested in the technicals of this, um, I know I did get a bit technical, but if you want to like, dive even deeper, uh, Masari have written a report on this. It was out a week or two ago. You can go on there and check it out. But this is effectively the process that we use to like, have this big sort of breakthrough around scalability and cost efficiency. Um, we have the data source, which we uh, already showed that, you know, querying Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, et cetera. We have the feed nodes, which we talked about sort of being run by Argent, Maker, DYDX, et cetera. They're sourcing that data. They're then signing, right? Signing to say that I, I, I as a feed attest to this data being true, this price being what it is. Now, this is where Schnorr comes in, which is our, our development. We then aggregate all of those signatures together. Effectively, you know, what happened before is each signature was separate and single, right? And you had to like add them all together as single things, right? Each one a, a different transaction. This way, we've, we've actually created a system where they sign on top of each other. So then what you get is one sort of super signature, which becomes like a single feed node promise, right? That this is the value and, you know, uh, you can trust this value, right? 28,500 for BTC and USD, for example. And then this is where it changes for layer one for Ethereum and, and layer twos. For layer one, we use an optimistic process, right? So on layer one, it would go from here into the verified promise and optimistic acceptance. And effectively what this means is that the promise goes on for 10 minutes, it's sitting there and it enters this challenge period where someone, uh, well, generally it's like an MEV thing where a bot would be looking to see if they can call challenge on this value, right? And if this value has been manipulated and it's different or it's wrong, right? Someone's been messing with the system and they've, they've tried to like trick us, right? To say drain a DeFi protocol or whatever. Um, they can do that. Uh, the, 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 the challenge period will sort of find, find that out. We'll like uh, uh, effectively uh, trigger it. And then the bot or whoever calls it will be rewarded in ETH, which is obviously very important for um, uh, the sort of a challenge period. You need some form of like reward to incentivize bots to be looking for this. On layer two, you get to here and then boom, that's done. There's no need for any optimistic process. There's no need for this challenge period. So how does this like com compare, if you like? Or, or everything we've talked about, the verifiability, the scalability, um, the decentralization, you know, how does this actually compare then when our oracles are live versus say Chainlink or Redstone, for example? Um, you've got people like Piff as well, who's sort of sitting around the Redstone camp as well. Um, this is it, as you can see, it's quite something. Um, the update cost on ETH, for example, is $1.71 versus $7.75 on Chainlink, right? That's an over 80% reduction. Uh, versus Redstone, again, you know, that's sort of 50, what that, 50 percent, over 50% reduction on layer one. And on layer two, similar results. So what's really interesting about this is the whole thing I talked about by decoupling the validator from the cost trade-off. So everyone else has to limit their validators. Chainlink limits their validators to 11 because it costs them so much more to add more. 
we can act effectively go up to 256 validators. We can go up to 2,056 validators. And that gas cost, 66,625, effectively the cost of actually pushing it on chain would be the same, right? So we can be the most secu secure, the most decentralized, which is incredibly important for oracles, which as you know, you know, this one's securing $6 billion right now, right? Security and decentralization are the most important factors. And that's sort of the, the, the huge breakthrough that um, the, the, the amazing engineering team at Chronicle have made. Um, as you can see, this puts Chronicle in a class of its own. And as I just talked about, we're launching now. So we've just launched this in the last few weeks. Um, we are uh, just getting up to speed on everything. Um, and uh, yeah, that is effectively what Chronicle Protocol is all about. And um, I appreciate you for, for sitting here and listening to me uh, jabber on about it for almost 15 minutes now. Charlotte's going to be very happy to know that I ran over by five minutes. Sorry about that. Um, we are currently hiring for a technical project manager and a developer relations. If you want to work with Chronicle, if you want to work with in fact, the Oracle of MakerDAO, you know, please head onto our website and apply. And if you want to get in touch, uh, there's all the details for you there. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Cheers.